In this video, we're going to learn about how to implement authorization in the ASP.NET Core. So we have gone through this diagram in the previous video, and we know that the first step we need to do is to apply a requirement. Uh, the simplest requirement we can apply to a page is to deny anonymous users. And to do that is very simple. Let's go to a page. And in our case, we have a index page Right? And we can deny anonymous access on the index page. And we can just uh, simply go to the page behind here. And then we go to the class. We decorate it with the authorize uh, attribute, which simply denies anonymous uh, identity. So I'm going to import the namespace. And now let's see what's going to happen if uh, we run our application. So of course the first page is trying to hit is the index page. But because our index page is protected, right? So it automatically redirects us to account login, the login page, right? With the return URL to be nothing. It's empty. If you happen to see the next page, it could mean that you had your cookie here that you didn't clear the cookie, right? Because we haven't implemented the sign out uh, functionality and if you didn't close your browser so your browser session will still keep that cookie inside the uh, the browser so once you clear the cookie you should be able to see your login page but what happens is really we have our authorization middleware after the routing it is seeing that you try to hit a page that needs uh, identities but it's not there. So it returns a HTTP 401 challenge, right? It's a challenge which automatically redirects you to the login page. The reason why it knows where your login page is, is that by default, the login page is supposed to be placed in the account folder and it's supposed to be called login, right? The page is supposed to be called login. It happens to be the case that we followed the convention, right? So if we change just temporarily, we change the folder to account one. And then if we run our application again, oh, let's see what happens. Now it's trying to still look for the login page, but then it says HTTP 404. Okay, so to explicitly specify where your login page is, you need to go to your startup.cs and then go under the, uh, the configure services here and inside the cookie authentication handler here we can specify where the login page is right so we can say login path right? so in here we can just specify account and then login right we can specify account one because we applied account one right if we specify this here right and just pay attention that here uh, we haven't even logged in yet. So, so this is still part of authentication. That's why we're configuring authentication. We're not configuring authorization yet. Right, so let's run the application again. And then this time it successfully located the login page under account one. Right. So let's change it back to account. And let's change this to the folder back to account. And that is supposed to work all right so let's input our username and password and now we successfully accessed our index page right our welcome page and from our developer tool we can see the cookie is present now okay so let's delete this cookie for now and then close this developer tool let's close the window going back to our code the next thing i want to show you is that placing the attribute right, the requirement on the page or on any endpoint requires the middleware to be present, right? So because if you place a requirement there and there's no middleware and then nothing is a dependency injected, then it's not going to do anything and it's actually going to throw an error. So let's see what happens there. So because we already have the authorization middleware placed right over here, right? So if we comment this out and then we run it, Let's see what happens now. Now we can see it throws an error and the error is very descriptive. It says that this endpoint index contains authorization metadata, 
but a middleware was not found that supports authorization, right? And then it tells you what to do. Uh, well, you can see that Microsoft has come up with really nice, really detailed error messages for a developer to code. Uh, many years ago, it is in this case. Anyways, this is what I want to show you that if you decorate a endpoint uh, with your requirement, you have to specify the authorization. All right. So next, let's add another page here. And then let's call this page the HR department, right? So this is going to be the HR department landing page. And we're going to create a reader page, which is a empty one. And then let's call it human resource. And let's add some styling. Let's use the same styling and copy and paste that over to our human resource. CSHTML page over here. And then, so this is, we're gonna change the title here to human resource. You're gonna delete this learn about here. And you just specify a policy that requires the department claim to see whether the department is HR. And then we assign this requirement to the policy. And then we apply this policy to the page so in order to specify the requirement and group the requirements into the policy we need to configure authorization right and and you know where we should go we should go to startup.cs and then go under configuration service configure services here this one dependency inject a lot of uh, services for authentication purpose of course, uh, we have another one that is similar to this, uh, which is add authorization, right? So we'll dependency inject uh, services uh, as well as figuring authorization over here. And what we can do with the options here is that we can add a policy, right? And then we can give the policy a name. So this one is, uh, let's call it must belong to HR department. So this is the policy name. And then you can see that we need to specify how this policy works with action delegate, right? And for that, we can just use Lambda expressions or, and then we can say policy.require, and we're gonna require claim. The claim type is department, and the value has to be HR we have added our first policy here. We added this claim to this policy, right? And now we can apply this policy on our human resource page. And we can go over here uh, and we can apply this against the same attribute, authorize attribute, do control dot to import namespace. And over here we can say policy, equals this policy name so now what we are saying is that the user must have a claim that satisfies this policy and what this policy is really asking for is very simple it requires the department uh, claims value to be hr right at this moment if we go to our login page right we created our uh, claim to only have the name and email we don't have a department claim yet so at this moment if i do control f5 it's going to build the application and it's going to run the application and then we'll see what happens right first of all i gotta log in and i'm going to insert my password over here okay so no problem accessing the index page but if we're trying to access our HR, our human resource page, I'm going to hit enter. It's going to tell me access denied. You see the access denied. And it's trying to say that, hey, the access denied page is not there. Right. So you can see that, again, this is uh, by default, the access denied page supposed to be under the account page. And if we were to specify where the access denied page is, we're 
again going back to startup.cs then you can see we specify the login page right and then we can specify the access denied page right over here all right so we can explicitly specify this and then we can just copy this name and then we just add another razor page click on add specify the name is access denied coming over here and again we're gonna say our title is access denied and then here we're gonna say you don't have you don't have access to the page you are looking for so with this simple change if we access our human resource page again it redirected us to the access denied page right this looks a little bit better than before so then how do we gain access to our human resource page the answer is pretty simple we go to our login page and then here we are going to add another claim here we're going to add a department claim right this is the type and then the value we're going to say hr and this has to be exactly the same as where we configure on the startup.cs here we're going to say the type name is department right and the value is hr and so here the claim uh, claim type name is department and the value is hr so with this change again let's run it once again right, so you can see that i am logged in already because i didn't close my all of my browsers so the the cookie is still inside here right so this is the old cookie it doesn't have the new uh the new claims so i have to delete this and if in this case at this moment if i refresh it takes me to the login page where i'm going to re-authenticate and then i'm going to click on the login page now my cookie regenerated this cookie will contain the new claim so now let's try to access our human resource page you see now we have access to our human resource page so this is a simple uh, condition here right we're just checking whether or not our cookie contains this particular claim right what if we want to check a presence of a certain claim again it's a simple case for that we are going to create a let's say let's create a control panel page or let's create a settings page let's call it settings page right? and the settings page can only be accessed by a admin we're not going to do anything on the page but in here we are going to add the author the authorize attribute and then import namespace here and then specify the policy to be admin only right, so this is the admin only policy which we haven't configured yet we're going to come over here and we're going to add the admin only policy all right so let's add the admin only policy on the top so the sequence doesn't really matter here um, i'm just thinking admin is really one of the first to come to mind so we're gonna just uh specify specify on the top and then here we're going to say policy again using lambda expression uh, we're going to we're going to say policy dot require claim and then you can see there is a signature which only takes the claim type and in this case it's a main claim right and then uh, we have already applied this up in only policy on the uh settings page right right over here the mean only policy the next thing we need to do is to in the login page uh we need to make sure that we're gonna add a another claim and this claims name is admin and well this valid doesn't really matter but let's set it to two we're gonna run control f5 and again we're gonna clear our cookie because we didn't have a sign out page and I didn't close my browser. So I'm gonna refresh this again, coming back to the, uh, the login page, try to log in again in order to get the admin claim. So now I have this cookie newly generated 
and this should contain our main claim. And now I can access, right? I can access the settings page. Without this claim, you won't have access to it. Let's see what happens if we do that. Again, delete this cookie, refresh the page, try to log in, go into index page. Now, manually navigate to the settings page. And now it says access denied, right? And this is exactly what's supposed to happen. And what if we create a human resource manager page? Right? So let's add a, another page and let's call it HR manager, right? So the HR manager page contains, you know, some information or something for the HR manager to do. So this is the HR manager page. And then here we are going to specify a policy to be a HR manager only something like that right so that's good and now let's configure this policy and it's just hr manager hr manager manager only is that what we specified hr manager only and over here again we're going to say policy policy dot require claim we're going to copy this right and then we can chain it by saying require claim so let's change the format a little bit so that it looks better. So when we chain it, what we are really saying is that we need this claim to be like this, and we need the next claim, which is a manager claim to be present as well, right? So this is a end from this claim to this claim is a end relationship. So once we've done that, we can close this off. And of course, we already had a department, HR department, and then uh, the manager claim is not there. If we're running this just like that, without the manager claim, we are expecting to see access denied page. Right? Of course, first of all, we need to clear this cookie again. F5 to see the login page and then input your username and password. Click on the login page. Now, navigate to the hr manager page and we see the access denied right so in order to fix that we need to go to our login page and over here we are going to add a manager claim again the value doesn't really matter because we're just checking the presence of the claim but just to make a complete so we add a true as the value. And then we're gonna build it, coming back to here, delete this cookie and refresh the page. Uh, we're gonna log in. Now the cookie should have the manager claim in it. It also has a HR department claim in it. And we should be able to access our HR manager page just like that. So we can see the HR manager page. So in this video, we have seen how we group different claims into policy, right? We have simple ones uh, and we have combinations. In the next video, we are going to create a more complicated case where we have specific logic, right? And then we would have to create this requirement handler, right? The authorization handler to specifically handling that requirement and we're going to see it in the next video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. If not, I'm going to see you in the next one.